can stand to worship. My victory is in your blood. My confidence is in your name. You took the shame so I could shine. So much you did without a promise. My victory, my victory is in my victory. Is in
when I think of the mercies of Jesus and all that he is to me.
there is a worthy sacrifice. Because I'm going to invite him now. Place that sacrifice because it's coming. It's coming. He inhabits the praises of his people. I came to introduce him to you tonight.
of glory, the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. That was for him. He's here tonight. The Lord our God in our midst is mighty. And we have Exodus 9. Sorry, Exodus 8, verse 1. Just a few scriptures and I'll introduce the next case. In the New Living Translation, do we have it? Let's read together. I want to go. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go back. Hallelujah. That's what we've come here to do. To worship him. To bow at his feet. Tonight is not about Nathaniel Bassey. Tonight is not about the guest. We've invited our, our music ministers to help us in this injunction. So I want you to, to pay attention, be very focused, because your word will come tonight. Yeah. Exodus 23. Hallelujah. How many of you are on a new level? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get that scripture when it's time. But let me just make this announcement. If you're here and you have a testimony from previous editions of the Hallelujah Challenge, we have a, a segment for testimonies. June, can you raise your hand? June, raise your hand. Just wave your hand there. Please just go over to that part of the auditorium. We'll be taking some live testimonies. Amen. I know I came in here and our brother here just stopped me and shared an incredible testimony. So, I mean, if, if you are here and you know God has encountered you or you've encountered God during the hallelujah challenge, please just go ahead and see our brother in white. Amen. Amen. Tonight I'm going to introduce I'll come from time to time to introduce our guest. Tonight we're coming to just place a heavy sacrifice on the altar. Somebody say heavy sacrifice. When it's time to shout, say shout. When it's time to jump, jump. When it's time to sing, sing. When it's time to pray, pray. Amen. Can we stand very quickly? Let's declare some of the words that have come to us. Amen. Can we stand? Can we stand? Can we stand? Give him a shout of praise. Amen. And by the way, I understand that there are quite some people outside without tickets. And I know that um, the idea is to get people with tickets in. In the next 10 minutes, those who don't have tickets, who are outside, will be allowed in to the extent that we have seats. That's why it's important to come early. So we won't, you know, deny people outside while we have seats inside. Amen. So time me 10 minutes from now, open the gates. And let the righteous nation come inside. Amen. James 4 6. James 4 6. James 4 6. Let's read one to go. And he gives what? 
give me the King James. I got that word in King James. Want to go. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but he giveth grace. Let me give you the context to this word I received. I was in Canada with my, in Canada with my family, Calgary to be precise. We went for the crossover night and I ministered at the Friends Church. And it was somewhat of a retreat also for me. So every morning, very early, I wake up just ministering unto the Lord. And a particular morning, I woke up and I just was overwhelmed by, by a spirit of gratitude. I mean, it was so real. I burst out crying. Normally, I'll have my earphones, you know, have some music, worshiping. I began to wail so strongly and I felt, oh, my children would come out and feel that there's something wrong with daddy. So I took off the headphones so I'm not too loud. And I just began to thank God. And all I, all I was saying was, who am I? What is my father's house? I mean, why are you using me? I was just so broken in the presence of God. I just wept for some time, just crying. And while I was praying, the spirit of God witnessed to my heart, he giveth more grace. As though he was telling me, you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, he, he giveth more grace. Say, he giveth more grace. I began to understand that our response to the grace of God is what? Gratitude. And his response to our gratitude is more grace. Can you lift your hands one more time and thank him? Say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And as I went into the scriptures, I saw that that word, more, means mega. Somebody say mega. mega. In the Greek, mega. So he gives us mega grace. Open your mouth and declare that I walk in mega grace. After this season, after this edition, I experience mega grace. Open your mouth like a thunder. Begin to declare it. More grace. It means exceeding grace. Thanksgiving is an expression of humility. And it gives more grace to the humble. Say, I'm walking in exceeding grace. The power to do more. The grace to do more. He gives, he supplies more grace. He giveth more grace. Hallelujah. 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 Say he gives me more grace. Say he gives me mega grace. I experience exceeding grace. Say my level has changed. Say my status has changed. Open your mouth and declare it in the presence of God. My level has changed. My ranking has changed. Open your mouth. Begin to declare the, the new status. The next level. My level has changed from this to this. My status has changed from this to this. I want you to release words in the presence of God. Yahweh Sabaoth is here. He confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. My level has changed. My status has changed. From single to married. From grace to grace. From faith to faith. From sick to heal. From great to greater. Open your mouth wide. Let him feel it. If I were you, I would speak. I would speak. There is such a supply of the Spirit here tonight. His presence is here. My level just came. My status just got upgraded. Prophesy. As you have spoken in God's ears, so shall it be. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. I want to bring up a dear friend of mine. I specifically chose him to 
to come up first to just split open the heavens with the high praises I know many people know him you know but I know him personally as a sincere man this is one of the very few people that when he what he says is what he means I just got connected to him because he's he's forthright he loves the Lord and I call him the minister of joy and heavenly enjoyment when he comes joy erupts and if you know me by, by now I'm big on honoring my colleagues and friends and fellow ministers with a good God bless you they call him Job praise the emperor if you are not ready to dance and jump this is a good time to go home with a hallelujah shout of praise welcome my brother my friend the minister of joy and heavenly enjoyment I christened him that name minister Joe praise somebody scream you are not shouting enough you are not shouting enough I'm not sure I'm not sure you understand what the festival is when you are on a festival you don't get quiet somebody shout hey! Hey! can I ask you a question what brought down the walls of Jericho what brought down the walls of Jericho what brought down the walls of Jericho if the wall came down by a south in Bible days they can come down by a south God. Hey! To God be the glory, great things He has done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son. This life and all torment for sin and open the life gate. Let all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us do your joy.
Stop playing English. Don't look around. Don't look around. You gotta be focused on your focus this time. Esatalabaka. Twenty more seconds. Eyapa kose. Eyeta tori. Ishalatura. Esolatobraha. Ten more seconds. You better get serious this time. Eyapa kora pates. Eyama toro dosha. Eyata kapa. Etosha. Helma, helma, mama. Helma, helma, mama. Helma, helma, mama. Helma. Suffered your beauty. If I didn't see to be enough, if I shine, you better scream. You better yaka by I will speak of your glory, and I will suffer your beauty. If you don't see to be enough, and if you shout, my sister. Keep us shot, 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 everywhere, all around the world, keep the Lord himself, keep us shot, keep us shot, miracles happen, keep us shot, 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 I will shot, I will shot, shot of joy. Shut up, Christ! Shut up, John! Shut up, Christ! Shut up, John! My God! I will shout! Hey! 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 I will shout! I will shout! Somebody shout! I will shout! I will shout! I will shout! Everybody! I will shout! I will shout! I will shout! I will shout! Shut up, Joe! Shut up, Peter! Shut up, Joe! Shut up, Peter! Shut up, praise! The devil is a bastard! I want to hear you. There is none. There is none. Oh, Lord, there is none. There is none. You better put it where he belongs. Hallelujah. Stop! 
the fire again. Oh yeah. Come this way, come this way. Leave them alone, leave them alone. Everybody in this. Everybody in this. I want to see you dance for me. Oh, yeah, dance. Oh, yeah, dance. We're 
Someone who does not understand why that happened or why that is happening. It is called Hallelujah Challenge. Hallelujah is from the word halal. Say halal. Halal is to be boisterous. Halal is a loud praise. I thought you respond with some, some volume. Let the high praises of the Lord be where in their mouth and a two-edged sword where in their hands. Halal is to be clamorously foolish before God. Can I give you 20 seconds to be clamorously foolish before God? This was the secret of David. I'm telling you this is a, a mystery, an ancient mystery. To exact dominion. <laughs> hey. 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 These are the people that God lifts. These are the people that God lifts. These are the people that God lifts. These, the These are the people that God fights for. These are the people that He blesses. Let the high praises. Halal is a colorful praise. That's why there are many colors here. It is to, it is to dance on undignified. Let me give you 10 seconds to just dance on dignified. Without, you don't need a beat. You don't need a sound. <laughs> These are ancient mysteries of our faith. We effect turnarounds. So, that was just to explain to some of the cute praisers in the house. We've only started. Say, we've only started. Somebody say salvation. Do you know what that word means, Salvation. In the, in the Greek, we know that it means soteria. Amen. It's that total finished work on the cross. Let me tell you what it means. It means rescue. Say rescue. It means safety. It means deliverance. It means health. It means wealth. It means blessing. Now, the prophet says to us, in Isaiah 12 verse 3 I believe 
He says, all of those things I've mentioned, you know, blessings, you know, rescue. He says, with joy shall you draw those things from the wells of salvation. Can I give somebody another 20 seconds to draw? Draw what you need with joy. Draw. Hey. With joy shall you draw. You pull them out with joy. You have them there, but you've got to pull them out. <laughs> Isaiah 25. Twenty-five verse six. I want us to read it before the next minister. Let's read one to go. Say, and in this mountain of Hallelujah Challenge, what will happen? The Lord of Hosts, Yahweh Sabaoth, shall make unto how many people? Everybody here. What is happening? A feast of fat things. A feast of loud things a feast of great things a feast of wines and of the lees of fat things full of marrow of wines and of the lees well refined very soon I'll call on that the original writer of that song the Lord has done it the Lord has done it Do you know why we go every land to bring the original people? Because they carry the revelation. So that when they sing it, it's different from when I sing it. Today, finally, finally, it shall be settled. The next person I'm bringing up. If you think you are sweating. You have not started. When you finish a ya ya in. When she tells you how how much backing she has, I love her, my sister. Everywhere I'm, we're doing ministry, we want to do it together. Welcome with me, with a good God bless you, the one and only vessel of Yahweh, Minister, Pastor Victoria Orenzi. Hallelujah. We still got joy in chaos. We've got peace that makes no sense. We won't be going under. You know why? We are not. So what do you say? I put my tell me why. He's never. He's faithful. So I ask you a question, answer it. So what? Uh, I hope you know how to answer that question. How do you answer? Hey, 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 you didn't answer well, no. You didn't answer well. You didn't answer well. You need to understand what you are saying. We still got joy in chaos. We don't care what's happening. We've got peace that makes no sense. We will not be going. For those that think it's over for Nigeria, forget it. We are not here. So what do you say? Say, I put my faith in Tell me why, tell me why, tell me why. He has never let me down. He's faithful for how long? So I ask you a question. You need to answer me right. So why? You need to shout and jump and say, say, he won't. It's not possible. He cannot fail us. He will not fail us. He has never failed and he will never fail. He See, we'll see 
sing it one more time. Are you with me? Are you with me? We'll sing it one more time. I need you to shout that it won't. When you know something is certain, there's a way you say it. Do you understand me? I say, we still got joy. Do you have your joy? We've got peace. It doesn't make sense. Yes. We won't be gone. It's not possible. Tell me why. I'm not held by God. So what do you say? See, I put my faith in Jesus. Tell me, tell me. what comes my way the greater one lives inside of me what is his name his name is Jesus I'm gonna dance and praise him it doesn't matter what comes my way the greater one lives inside of us can you call his name We are born a winner. Yes. We are modern victorious. We are as of his kingdom. We are filled with the holy, holy, holy ghost. We are born a winner. We are modern victorious. We are free. Let's go. I'm gonna dance and praise it. It doesn't matter what. Tell me. What lives inside of me? What is his name? His name is Jesus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what comes my the way. The greater one. The greater one lives inside of me. What is his name? His name is Jesus. One more time. I'm gonna I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what comes my the way. The greater one. The greater one lives inside of me. Shout his name. His name is Jesus. I'm gonna dance again. I'm gonna dance and praise him. Hey. It doesn't matter what comes my way. 
break loose. We break fuck. We break fuck. We break fuck. We break fuck. We arise and sign for our lights. Has come. Here we arise and sign for our lights. Has come. We are the head and not the tail. We are the head and not the tail. We are the head and not the tail. We are the head. Your time is up. We are the victory. In the name of Jesus, Satan be gone. We are the victory. Oh, devil, take your hands off my life. Take your hands off my life. Lift your voice and tell him. Take your hands off. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And it's over Roku. What do you say? We know they walk alone. Run on the side. And he said, and it's over to you go. Papa, Papa, Nile. And it's over to you go. Papa, Papa, let you tell us why. We can't get it. We know they walk alone. We know they walk alone. Tell us who you walk with. Say we walk with God the Father. We walk with God the Father. Say we. We are walking miracles. We live a life of favor. We know we are. We are walking in power. We are walking miracles. We live. So we say, take a look at us. We are a wonder. It doesn't matter. Tell me. We know. Take a look at us. It doesn't matter. He 
has made a way. Hallelujah. Can you go to Psalms 81 verse 3 NIV? together sound the ram's horn at the new moon and when the moon is full on the day of what so I'm supposed to blow the trumpet right now I'm sounding a trumpet of no more delay the moon is full your time has come Father, I usher your people into their season. According to the word of the Lord, it shall be said of them, see what God has done. I'm speaking tongues. I just released something over this house now by revelation. Woe betide the devil that tries to stop you now. While I was coming up stage, stage I heard the name Ben God. That, that trumpet sound is your announcement. Father, let me blow this one more time. I announce your people into their season. The moon is full and the trumpet is blasting. The moon is full. The moon is full. And your time has come. Nigeria, your time has come.
Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. He has taken over. That battle you came with is no longer your battle. This week, those who try to pull you down will fall for your sake. There are people here, you will be lifted above your enemies at the place of work. They try to transfer you. They try to send you to a remote place where there is no relevance. The Lord just turned that around. While you are yet standing, while you are yet standing, we must apologize for the heat in the house. Now, when it comes to event venue in Lagos, at least for now, there's, there's nowhere, you know, supposedly more prestigious than Eco Hotel, but we're struggling, you know, to, to have um, the cooling system work very well. But I want you to take that sweat as a sacrifice. This is the last time you will sweat to any living. Use that as a point of contact. Thus far and no more. You know, I'm a very prophetic person. Everything is prophecy for me. Hold that sweat. Say, thus far and no more. Thus far and no more. You won't struggle to live the abundant life. And I pray for somebody here. May God raise somebody here who will build an edifice better than this. Bigger than this. For the kingdom. For the sake of the name of Yahweh. Amen. Please don't go. Towards the end, we're just going to round off. We're going to have the hallelujah challenge with the team. Come up here. We'll blow the horn. you dance over your journals. We'll get the Father's blessing. If you've come this far, you might as well just stay that far. After 20 days, tell somebody, after 20 days, ain't going nowhere. Amen. Till my moon is full and your moon is full tonight. Amen. And I'm going to crave the indulgence of the ministers at some point towards the end. We will come up here and we will release more grace, mega grace, as we close out. But before we take testimonies, I want to invite someone so special to me. One of the things we said we will do tonight is we will pray through the words that we've been praying during the challenge. We will just engage them tonight. Please welcome with me the one God made for me. The love of my life, a woman of God. You better thank her. Without her, there will probably be no hallelujah challenge. Because she releases me by God's grace to do what I do. Celebrate my dear wife, my crowning glory, to lead us in a short session of prayer. Yeah. 
himself in prison and then they began to see. The Bible says they pray. Have you son? Have you son today? Yes. It's time to pray. How did they pray? Ratos chapter 10 you know Daniel prayed and and then he, the Bible says that on the first day God had answered him I'm here to tell somebody that you prayed on the first day Hallelujah challenge began God answered you Hallelujah. praise God Hallelujah. Daniel said the prince of Persia withheld my answers praise God but what did he do angel Gabriel came and sorted it we're going to be praying now that whatever has stopped your answers thus far and no more Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. thus far and no more Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus go ahead and war with those words thus far and no more my answer has come I have received my answers in the name of Jesus In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen. So the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, Are angels not sent forth to those that shall be heirs of salvation? Right? They hearken unto the voice of your command. So they are waiting for you to say to them, Go. Praise God. And that's what happened when Daniel said to, um, when Angel Gabriel came to help Daniel. Praise God. You're going to be asking for angelic assistance. Praise the name of the Lord. In every situation that has caused you delay, you're going to ask for angelic intervention in that situation. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead and ask. In the name of Jesus, we ask for angelic intervention, angelic assistance to dislodge everything that has caused delay in your life. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and ask for angelic intervention. In the name of Jesus, we dislodge every power of darkness that has caused delay. In the name of Jesus, we dislodge every power of the enemy that has caused delay in our lives. Prosper and noble, every spirit responsible for delay. We dislodge, we dislodge, we dislodge, we dislodge, we dislodge, we dislodge, we dislodge. We send them on assignment, angels on assignment, in the name of Jesus, angels on assignment, angels on assignment, we dislodge every power of the enemy, in the name of Jesus. Every agent, we dislodge every agent. We dislodge every agent. We dislodge. We dislodge. In the name of Jesus. Uh. 
In Jesus, my name we prayed. So if you've been following the challenge, you know that this last prayer point is one of the most popular, right? Hebrews 10, 37. The Bible says that he that is to come, what? He that is to come has what? So you're going to pray now that on this last day, we put an end to it. He is to come. Whatever that he stands for in your life, you're going to be praying now that he has come. In the name of Jesus, you will not live here without him coming. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. He has come. My marriage has come. My children have come. My career has come. In the name of Jesus. It must happen. It has come to pass. It has come to pass. It has come to pass. As you have spoken in the ears of the Lord, so shall it be. Amen. Can I declare to someone, the seat is declared too hot for those sitting on your portion. Whatever your portion is. You know, there's something God is doing in Africa. Yesterday, I was with my friend, Pastor Jerry, in Ghana. I mean, we had, with my brother Joe, ministry we had about over 60,000 people I mean the, the, the intensity of prayer there was like a tsunami in fact while I was ministering I had to hurry because the, the unction was so much I could have gone for hours but I, I rushed up because I had to catch a plane we declared the seat too hot for those, for systems, for structures, sitting and occupying your position. This week, you will see the God of Hallelujah Challenge in action. You have raised an incense. You've raised sacrifice for 20 days. And as we blow the horn, as we close out with the trumpet sound, you will see, you will begin to experience 10 years in one year, 10 years in one month, 10 years in one day. There is something God is doing in the last day, so he's doing a quick walk, a quick walk. Because Jesus has to come, so he's doing everything quick, quick, quick. You will experience a quick walk this week in Jesus' mighty name. One more prayer round, another 10 minutes. And then you would catch your breath, hear some testimonies as we prepare for the second half. How many of you feel an intensity in the room? You know, in fact, maybe what Eco Hotel is saying is right. They said, well, this is their maximum that this AC should carry, but perhaps it says the, the energy we are generating is beyond normal. 
but they should buy more AC, Sha. The Lord of hope. Show forth. Show forth. Your glory, Yahweh, Yahweh. Sabao. Yahweh. One more time. The Lord of hope. Show forth your glory. Show forth your glory. Yahweh, Yahweh. Can I release that prophetic word again? That those people who have said they want to pull you down will come down for your sake. We declare the seat too hot for those sitting on your portion. We declare the seat too hot for structures, for systems holding back your breakthrough. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to invite another young lady. You know, God has so blessed me to, to have just young firebrand and Jesus loving, demon chasing young people. And she has a testimony. They waited five years for a baby. She ministers on this platform. And when the baby was about to come, the devil tried to take her out. I mean, my wife and I were planning for our 10 year wedding anniversary. And you know how our wives can be so attached to those things. Like 10 years? We had planned a trip abroad with our friends to the Seychelles. We wanted to go and just celebrate the love of God and grace of God. But the Lord kept us back. And we had to put together a prayer chain. So I didn't go for that trip because God put me back. And the church, we prevailed and traveled in prayer. And today she's alive, she's here with the baby so she'll be leading a prayer for 10 minutes on fruitfulness whatever is barren in your life whatever is a drought in your life God is turning around welcome with me pastor Oyekon Koku very quickly The Lord of hosts, the Lord, the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Indeed, indeed. This is your name. I love you, Rabbi. incense in this place, Lord. Just be glorified. The presence of the Lord is in this place. We're going to be praying about fruitfulness. I'm going to start in Genesis 17 and verse 6. This is what the Lord God Almighty promised Abraham. Um, at that point, the Lord had changed his name and he said, you would no longer be called Abraham. Um, I will make you Abraham. And then he said to him, I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. He'd already changed his name. He'd already begun to move in his life. But it wasn't enough for the Lord to do just that because with the Lord, just enough is never good enough. Yeah, he's the God of the exceeding abundant. And in your life, that may already be so. God has already started to do something. Maybe he's changed your name proverbially. He's begun to change your story. But he's saying to you, son and daughter, that's not enough. I'm the God of the overflow. The God that is here to make you exceedingly fruitful. Yeah, if we will believe. Abraham believed and it was counted to him for righteousness. The rest of it was just God's joy to just lavish stuff on him. 
So we're going to pray the scripture because we are the seed of Abraham. We're the children of Abraham. This promise is not just to Abraham, but to his seed. That the Lord God Almighty will make us exceedingly fruitful. That he will make nations of us. And indeed, that kings, people of noble, noble esteem, people of high esteem or value would come from us. Things, we sing that song, out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. Yeah, because where there are waters, there can be more fruitfulness. Psalm says that you would be like a tree that's planted beside the water and your fruit would not fail. You would be evergreen, whether in season or what the economy calls out of season. So we're just going to lift our hands to the Lord. We're going to stand and we're just going to take God at his word. And we're going to start with thanksgiving. Come on, let's turn up the volume in the name of Jesus. And just begin to thank him for this promise. Because the promises of God find their yes and amen in Jesus Christ. They find their yes and amen and Jesus has been faithful. So all of the promises of God are yes and amen in him. Just begin to thank God Almighty because he's desired to make you exceedingly fruitful. It doesn't matter what the global economy is saying. It doesn't matter what the exchange rate is saying. God is saying not just in your business, in your body, in your health, in your mind, in your ideas. Oh, for witty invention. Oh, in the strategies that the Lord God Almighty will give you. In your relationships, in your academics. Whatever the area of your life is that you would be exceedingly fruitful. Exceedingly fruitful. Exceedingly fruitful. Say, God Almighty, I lay hold to your promise. I say yes and amen in Christ Jesus. I say it comes to pass in my life. The word of the Lord says that you shall eat of the fruit of your lips, whether of good and all of evil. That you would decree a thing and that thing will be so over your life. Just begin to decree. Oh, hold your hand upon your body. I am exceedingly fruitful. It's not enough to have just enough. When you have just enough, you can't be a blessing in the way that you decide to be. No, you need to live in the overflow because Christ Jesus has died for it. Thank you, Jesus, because I'm exceedingly fruitful. Oh, Rabat City Abahanda. It doesn't matter what my eyes see because I don't belong to a kingdom of feelings. I belong to the kingdom of faith that calls the things that aren't as though they were. I decree and declare that the land of my life, that everything that pertains to me is exceedingly fruitful in the name of Jesus. And you would think, right, that it would stop then with Abraham. Since God has said this promise is to you and to your seed. But if we go to Genesis 26, Genesis 26, you begin to see the overflow in the life of Isaac. I read from verse 12. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father. It says, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father. And they had filled them with earth. And Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us for you are much mightier than we. Verse 17, then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gera and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them. It said he called them by the names which his father had called them. Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and they found a well of running water there, but the herdsmen quarreled with them. So they said, they called the name of the well Essek. It says, verse 21, that they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also. So they called the name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Yeah, you know, thank you, Jesus, because you're getting ready to pour out a blessing Oh, so overwhelming on your people. Yes, 
that there will be some that will contend against them. It doesn't matter who's going to quarrel with you, who's going to conspire to move you out of your workplace, who's going to contend and wrestle against you. Wherever you move to, wherever you dig a well, as surely as you will be faithful to dig that well, the Lord God Almighty will cause it that you are exceedingly fruitful, that you are prosperous, and you are prosperous. Whether you're in Nigeria, whether you're in Ghana, whether you're in Afghanistan, whether you're in Ireland, whether you're in America, whether you are in Mexico, wherever upon the face of the earth that you are, where you dig a well unto the Lord your God, that the Lord God Almighty will make you fruitful. So far as you walk and abide in that covenant, oh Rabbi Sanda, the word of the Lord says, follow the ancient path. Yes, those ways that his father, the father before him has dug according to the covenants of the Lord. Hallelujah. The last thing is this. I want us just to recommit ourselves to the Lord. It's not enough to be people who see the hand of the Lord, who are blessed by the hand of the Lord, the great things of the Lord. We must be people who are like Moses, who also know the ways of the Lord. Because in actual fact, a lot of the times, if you look at all the scriptures in the Bible that talk about prosperity and about blessing, about fruitfulness, speak about it within the context of obedience within the context of obedience it's not just you know a willy-nilly promise that goes out to everybody but to those who are faithful and obedient i'm going to read some scriptures deuteronomy 28 and verse 33 this is what the lord told the children of israel would happen if they were not obedient that a nation whom you have not known will eat the fruit of your land and the produce of your labor and you shall only be oppressed and crushed continually. However, these are the scriptures that speak on abiding in the Lord. John 15 and 5, I'm the vine and you are the branches. Abide in me and I in you and you will bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Isaiah 1 verse 19 to 20. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. John 12, 23 and 26. It says that Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. Jesus said this as he began to talk about what he was going to do. The obedience that he had come to fulfill. And he gave his life as that weed that fell into the ground. And because of that, he died in obedience, sacrificial obedience. It was able to bear the fruit of you and I to the glory of God. Just lift your hands to the Lord and recommit to him. That the land of your life would be fruitful. Just renew that commitment to him. Say much more than before, God. Because of this hallelujah challenge, God. Much more than before, let a grace come upon me to be devoted to you in everything. No matter what you require of me, no matter how painful it is, just like Jesus, that obedience was incredibly painful. But he gave his life in obedience that he might be exceedingly fruitful. I decree and I declare that you, as you are obedient to the Lord, everything that has been a delay in the manifestation of this promise of exceedingly, exceedingly fruitful in your life, that the Lord God Almighty will move it out of the way. Every obstacle be cast into the sea. Yes, Lord, as we devote ourselves to you, let the land of our lives in all ramifications be exceedingly fruitful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord.
is saying, what the Naira is saying, and the situation of the, you know, the, the economies of the earth. But you see, the Bible says in Isaiah 60 that darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But for you, God will arise with light. You will do the biggest things you've ever done in this economy. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm quickly going to, you know, call out a maker who would, you know, receive the testifiers. And while they come up stage, I want to just, I um, mean, please... I crave your indulgence to recognize someone who is special to me and after a while I'm going to recognize a number of people. If you watch Hallelujah Challenge, you will know that I am big on honor. Amen. Amen. I'm big on honoring God and the men and women he has sent to be a blessing to me. Amen. And I'm going to take some time at some point as God helps me to, to just honor and celebrate them. Can you celebrate every music minister here tonight? celebrate them celebrate everyone who ministered during the challenge Pastor Toby is here Apostle Selman, Pastor Jerry Pastor Bemigo is here Pastor Pat you know celebrate them for me and while we're worshipping someone who's been a big blessing to me and I've known him way you know way back even before God brought him to limelight and lifted him to serve our nation um, right from our city of David days and even prior to that and a man of God, a child of God who loves the Lord and always everywhere God is mentioned when he heard about this he says you know what I'm out of the country but straight from the airport I'm going to come in to worship God please celebrate with me Someone I call my big brother, personal big brother, the immediate past governor of Akwaibom State. His Excellency, Pastor Udom Emmanuel. <laughs> Celebrate him. Let's give honor to whom honor is due. Celebrate him for me. Thank you, sir. Amirio. Amen. Amen. I'm going to take some time to honor my friends. Please permit me, okay? But let's have the testifiers. Very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. No, no. One grace. Mega grace. One. They can all come up. Let, let them come. Let them come. Let them come up. Let them come. Up. Let them come. I'll call the other names. Odia Eze. Sorry if I mispronounce any name. Please bear with me. Olatona Belumi, Adeshe Victoria Adenike, Amara Chuku Unokoro, Maria Adolfi. Okay, we have a few written testimonies. Chioma Akalumi and Favor Michael Osaniku. Please come up. Thank you. Hallelujah. it finally testimony <laughs> i want to thank god in the month of october um sometime last year i was reached out to by someone on linkedin and she said oh i think you qualify for this job so it's a multinational job somehow um i went through the interview stage and it was time for them to give me an offer during the hallelujah challenge i said god i desire this job because obviously this was going to come with better packages and all of that on day seven they sent me the first offer to negotiate and I was okay with the salary, actually. It was like above, by 4% increase. That's times four of what I already earned. 
But then on day nine, they got back to me and said, oh, the ESCOs reviewed. Mind you, these are not Nigerians. They said they reviewed and they got back to me. On day nine, they had increased the role and increased my pay. And then starting out the job, before the Leah challenge was over, I got the offer letter. Then in February, they told me, okay, it was time, now it was time for my confirmation. I said, God, the, in fact, when I got the, the offer letter, I, I screamed in the restroom. I'm like, Jesus, yeah, because how in this economy? But then I live above the economy. In February, in February, it happened again. And they told me it was time for them to confirm me. But before my confirmation, a week before Hallelujah Challenge had started, they told me they were going to increase my salary for having done well. What have I done? I really do not know what he wrote. I was just doing what God was telling me to do. And then they increased my salary before my confirmation. And when I was confirmed, the white guy said, you are so certain about your next role because we are going to increase your role in a few months. This has never happened before. And then I said, finally, God has done it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did we say about our testimonies? Our testimonies, what will happen? We go loud. Um, so on the 9th of February, I made a tweet that, oh, I wanted to pay my school fees, but I didn't know I was going to pay it. But like I was doing so well in my academics and I really would like to pay it. And then on the, on the 10th of February, which was day five, before the end, Pastor Nat said, there's somebody here. You are thinking, how will your school fees be paid? I want you to, I want, the Lord said that it has been sorted. And shortly after that, a friend of mine sent me a message that Pastor Nat definitely mentioned you. Please send me your account details. Let me pay this. Thank you. Jesus is Nathanabasi prophesied about kingdom marriages and my wedding was to be in November but for some reason the enemy struck in and um, my husband was to return back to the country in September but at the immigration he had documentation issue he was asked to go back what we thought was just supposed to be a walkway thing endured for about three weeks he would go to the off in, um, home affairs office and come back no result. He would go there, come back, no result. But on the day five of the Hallelujah Challenge, Pastor talked about grace and mercy experience, which was gain. And then he said that we should list out that thing that we want as a, our as a hot miracle. And we should write it out on our journal what we wanted. That was on the 8th of October. My husband was to go back there on the 9th of October. And I listed it out and I told God that this is what we want. In that building at the Home Affairs Network, it was a problem to this issue that he was having to resolve. But as he, on the morning of the night, he called me early in the morning. I was like, baby, I'm going. And I said, baby, go. You would have grace and mercy experience. And he went there, people of God. He came back and said it was sorted out. Now, for God, for, for him to be proven that God did it, he was asked to rebook his tickets and come back on Thursday for final documentation. And when he went back on Thursday, the man there told him that, ah, Mr. Lawrence, since you left, the network stopped working. My husband told them that since I am here, the network will return back. And he went there and everything was sorted. And he came back, we had our kingdom wedding and we, had a, we are enjoying our kingdom marriage. Hey, <laughs> can you prophesy to some singles here? Auntie, you don't want to prophesy. Tell them that by next hallelujah festival. By next hallelujah Come festival. On. You would have your kingdom married and wedding. Good evening, everyone. I have multiple testimonies. I just don't know how to do it. Okay, so last year, February, during a little challenge, I told God that there is this issue I have in school. I've 
actually finished, um, I've graduated from school, but there's a result that is delaying me. I didn't fail the course, but I was told I failed, that I should come back and come and write it. I said, God, this is not going to happen. So I, cho- I joined Hallelujah Challenge. During that period, God did it. They, call, they called me that. My, when the list came out that my name is there, I was like, glory to God. Another thing is, I told God that my sister is planning to relocate to UK. And she has been trying, 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 trying. So I told God, this thing should just work out because I really want to testify. I want, I want this testimony to be loud. So during September, um, the, approval, the visa was approved and they went last year. I told God I want to serve in Lagos also, that God should just make it possible. When the um, call-up letter came out, I'm definitely serving in Lagos presently. Another one is, I pray to God that I need a job. The job that I'm not qualified for, even though I'm a copper, God gave it to me. Then this year, um, no, sorry, last year, October, during Hallelujah Festival, when personal said we should dress like our miracle. So I came along with my passport and everything. This year, I applied for visa last year, but it was refused. But this year, also this February, during the Hallelujah Challenge, Pastor said dress like a miracle. So I carried my winter jacket because I have one already. I carried my traveling box and my passport. I was holding it in my hand. So I went for, I went for my application on Tuesday. And lo and behold, this morning, I got the approval. I just want to say Hallelujah. to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But this one, all of you are leaving us like this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, I just want to thank God for life. I was here last October for the festival. I was praying to God for a change in status. And I said that when I come next time, I want to be here to give the testimony. January 26th. I had a really bad crisis. I was rushed to the hospital. I was on oxygen for seven days straight. I could not do anything. God intervened. Everything started to go well. All the procedures went well. There was no complication. I walked out of the hospital on my legs alive. When I came here today, I'd even forgotten about the prayer that I prayed at the last festival. But immediately I walked into the compound today there was, there was a confirmation, like, it just entered, and, like, God changed my status like that. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody's status is changing. Good evening, everyone. I'm here to give this testimony on behalf of my son, Vido. Um, last year, Hallelujah Challenge, I stood in the gap for him. My number one um, request from last year's Hallelujah Challenge was that God would deliver him completely from the foul spirit of autism and um, every developmental challenge. And I know that I exposed him to all of the songs during Hallelujah Challenge. He learned how to sing Jesus CA and all of that. So going back to school, we were already facing so many challenges. Um, the school was insisting that he needed a therapist to sit with him in school to be able to do things. But as his mom, he's a born conqueror. His name is Vido. So I just insisted that he's going to be independent. I have worked and labored where it matters the most. And I'm not going to put him in bondage by attaching another human being to him. So every time he will go to class, he doesn't copy notes. He doesn't, he doesn't listen to his teachers. All he does is just sing. He will keep saying, what was impossible? Baba, you made possible. So all his teachers, everybody in school knew that. For Vido, when you, when you want to greet him, when he's coming to school, you don't need to tell him to say good morning. The first thing you sing to him is, what was impossible? He will answer you. So he just kept on going that way. I will just shorten the testimony. This year, January, this year he turned um, seven in February, sorry. And as he resumed for second term, 
the Spirit of God had come upon him because I used Isaiah 11 verses 3 to pray every day from the last challenge over him. The Spirit of God had come over him. Immediately he walked into his class. He was calm. He sat still. He copied his notes. He listened to his teachers. He's very responsive. It's been from one testimony to another testimony. He's independent. He prays with me now for other children who are on the spectrum. He knows all the scriptures that I teach him. He's growing in leaps and bounds. I just want to thank God because God has delivered my son from the foul spirit of autism permanently. Hallelujah. And we prophesy to every child here that our children will grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Um, first of all, I want to thank God for getting tickets this year. Last year I had to stream. Um, but I want to thank God at the end of Hallelujah Festival last year, October. Um, Pastor Nat mentioned telling people congratulations. So I just sent my friends, based on what I knew they were believing for, congratulations on this. I want to thank God for two of my friends in particular. One of, I sent to her, congratulations on your admission and scholarship. I want to thank God that currently she's abroad studying. Secondly, I want to thank God for another one of my friends. I sent to her, congratulations on your wedding. At the time, she was not dating anybody. And she's getting married next week. Um, finally, I want to thank God that today we receive the evidence for the healing for my auntie in Jesus' name. You better tell somebody on your right and left, congratulations. Shout it, congratulations. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Um, good evening, everyone. Okay, so my testimony is that God loves me too much. Basically, I enrolled for a course for my master's um, program because I'm trying to go to law school this year. And during the day that Pastor Jerry came, I literally spent the entire night crying because I got a rejection letter from the school that I actually really wanted to go to. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to law school anymore. I'm done. So long story short, this morning, no, sorry. The course I was taking for my master's exam, I mean, my master's course, um, one of the class, one of the exams we had to do, I couldn't do the exam because I didn't have the software for it. Long story short, this morning, I had emailed the professor, but he didn't answer me. So this morning, I got an email from the professor after a month. And he told me, oh, I love everything that you've turned in. Mind you, I have not turned in anything. So I don't know what he saw. But he gave me a 90% on every single thing. I want to thank God. I want to thank God because I'm going to go to law school. I want to thank God because God really does answer prayers. So don't give up because you're going to get to where God has called you to be. May God cause your enemies to hear a sound. A sound of favor on your behalf. Praise God. The summary of my testimony is this. Every time we praise God and write everything in our journal, it comes to pass. This particular day, two years ago, the war started in Ukraine. And God has kept me alive. I went back. I finished I came back here. Last year, there was a bombing. I didn't hear it because why? I was praising God during Hallelujah Challenge. Whoa. My friend called me that her window shattered. I said, I didn't hear anything. And I backtracked. Oh, it was the day we were singing hymns during Hallelujah Challenge. God kept me and preserved me. And Pastor Nat said, in nine months, people will come and celebrate with you. And I came back home safely. Visa that was delayed, it's less than 24 hours, came out. And God saw me through. And now I'm singing, Tobe Chuku, Tobe Chuku, Tobe Chuku, He has done it for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to thank God for a new job. So last year, I was actually trusting God for a better job. Although I had not gotten my certificate, I just rounded up with my uh, program. So I was frustrated because the job I was doing, they were always owing salary. In fact, at that point, they were owing two months' salary. After Hallelujah Challenge, grand finale, on the Monday, 
earlier I had applied to a company, but on LinkedIn, they rejected me. On the Monday I got up, I said, Holy Spirit, I'm not going to work today. I'm tired. <laughs> and <laughs> Holy Spirit encouraged me to go to work. I managed to go to work. When I got to work, he said I should go to the website of that company and apply. I went to the website, and they said there's no vacancy, but I can apply in case if there is. And I applied. Immediately, they sent me an email inviting me for an interview. I went for the interview, and it was... As if the MD, it was virtual, the MD just said, what should, so what should we be calling you? As if I had already gotten the job. And I told them my name, and then he said, there's another thing I'll have to do. It was actually typing. Earlier, as if God had been training me for that particular position, I typed because I'd been typing for my friend as a lawyer. He prepared me for that. And I got the offer letter, and that was how I started the job. In December, they actually paid me my full salary, and, and a bonus and 13th month, although I've not worked there for three months. I just want to give God all the glory because it wasn't a coincidence. It was by His grace. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I'm not going to work today. I'll... Good relationship. Amen. Good evening, Pastor Nath. Good evening, church. This testimony is to, it's not my testimony I'm sharing on behalf of my daughter. Pastor Nath, you need to listen to your prophecy. You called my daughter's name twice on the 14th day of the Hallelujah Challenge. You said, oh dear, oh dear, the Lord will visit you. I have it on record here, Pastor Nath. I have never met you. My daughter is far away in Manchester. And she said after this prophecy, she's found peace like a river. Praise the name of the Lord. The devil fired his best shot at my family. But after your prophecy, Pastor, there has been reconciliation. Son reconciled to the Father. My daughter has found peace and I have also found peace. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor, this is the prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody called Odia. Odia. The Lord will visit you today. Hallelujah. 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 Give Jesus all the glory. The Lord will locate you today. How many of you remember that our church member, Sesu? Amen. Says, where are you? The devil tried to kill him. But thank God that we have a God who delivers. Amen. Good evening, everybody. My name is Maria Duffy. Um, this Hallelujah Challenge, I made up my mind I was going to be serious. Other times I would join midway, I would just lose interest. Well done. <laughs> so, one week into the challenge... One week into the challenge, I, I, was, I slept. I was okay. When I, by the time I woke up, I just became very ill. I got to the office. They asked me to go to the hospital and go home. So that evening, they were just saying, just relax. God will understand. But I insisted I must continue. I didn't know God was protecting me ahead. The next week, exactly one week after that, I went to the international airport to pick my sister. Before 7 a.m., I was coming... If those that are conversant with the road, from the ramp into Oshodi, I was driving and there was a bus coming from the expressway. And you know all these downfall drivers, how they behave. There was somebody hanging at the back and he slept off. So while I was descending the ramp, the bus was coming from the other end and just swept into, into the, the lane in front of me. And the person that was hanging fell right in front of me. When he fell, I, I stepped on the brake and I froze because I thought I had killed him. I looked at the rear mirror. I saw the person behind me was very close. And my sister didn't even understand what happened. She was like, ah, why did that bag fall? I said, it's not a bag. It's a human being. And he stood up. He was confused because I could see his eyes. He was sleepy. He was already bleeding blood all over and all that. I was just shaking and he just walked by the side and left. And I, I just want to give God all the glory because if... if I had moved an inch, 
Only God knows what would have happened. You know, show you where they don't, they don't listen, they act. They will just burn the car and only God knows. I just want to return all the glory. Can you God. lift your hands and give God praise? Our brother shared a testimony with me. Let me take his very quickly. We have Ntokozo in the house. All the way from South Africa. And we have Joe Metal from Ghana. Thank you, Pastor Rat. Uh, in 2022, let me start that way. In 2022, I was hospitalized for a couple of months outside the country for an ailment the doctors could not treat. I came back in 2023, it reoccurred, still without a solution. I was booked for about three surgeries for what they thought was the issue. And what was it? I was having constant blood flows without knowing where it was coming from. And on the 6th of February, I was on the Hallelujah Challenge. And Pastor Nat, God bless you. Pastor Nat, God bless you. Jesus. An affliction of two years ended in one minute. And I've come to return all the glory to God because I was also booked for another surgery this year. As a matter of fact, they had booked three surgeries from April and all that stopped in one day to the glory of God. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. So last year, a lady testified here of how a man transferred 200 plus to her account. Um, and the name was Emmanuel Savior. She turned back, she couldn't see the person again. So right there where I was, I had goosebumps and I was like, God, if you could do this for this person, I am the next person now, and I will come back here to testify. So just last week, okay, the thing is, I'm a nurse, a dental nurse. So I want to have my post basic in general nursing, which is going to be for 18 months. And I got admission in Kogi State. So it's a private nursing school and I need about 500,000 naira. So one woman called me last week, Sunday. Apart from the declaration Pastor Nat made that day, then Pastor Jerry Essie also said before the next seven days, Apostle Joshua Sama also said his own. So last week, Sunday, a woman just called me and said, Hello, Victoria. I thought you said you got admission in Kogi State. Why are you not going? So I told her I'm trying to resign and gather money. She now said, How much is it? I told her 484000 naira. She said, You know what? Send your account number. Let me send a token out of the money. I was like, okay, thank God, this one is out of it. The following day, I received an alert of half a million naira, 500,000 naira. As if that was not enough. The way I shouted, Jesus, I needed to go to our restroom in the clinic, and I was just happy. So on Wednesday, I went to a supermarket to buy some stuff, and the woman I met there engaged me in the conversation and said, oh, you're a nurse. My daughter too is a nurse. She's in Avepa Balala University. I said, okay, nice. She said, where are you going to for your post-basic? I said, Kogi State. She said, oh, that's my state and where my husband is from. I said, nice. She said, okay, what, what, what town in particular? And Holy Spirit dropped it in my mind that she's from Ayingba. So I told her Ayingba. She said, oh my God, I'm from Ayingba. My husband is from Ayingba. You know what? We built a house in Ayingba. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she said, when, when, when are you going? I told her next month. She said, you know what? If I give me your number, before you go, make sure you come back. We are going to give you a room. So you probably you get a house very close to school. That is if where we are going to give you is not far from your school. And I want to say thank you to God. To so as many people here, God is faithful. If you can only hold on to him. Hallelujah. Hey! Lift your hands and give him thanks. Say, mine will be loud. Say, mine will be loud. My own go loud, oh Jesus. My own go loud, oh Jesus. Hey, my own go loud, oh my God, my God, go big, oh. You are prophesying, oh. <laughs> then go hear my own, oh. Amen. All the way from South Africa. I just love her ministry. I, I love her husband. I love this couple. Since I got connected to their ministry, I want them to be at everything I do. Just welcome with me, 
Ntokozo, and Nkubeko, Mbambo. Put your hands together. Put your hands to come on, celebrate them. This is the second half. Also, many things tonight. Taking us to the throne room will be someone who has blessed my life. I've drunk from that fountain for years. I don't know if you know, we sing praises to your name. You deserve the glory. The priest of worship himself, Terry McCalmon. Where are the inner chamber people? The secret place people? Yeah, we are going to get there. Please welcome my friend, my brother, my sister, Ntokozo and Nkubeko. Celebrate them. Come on, let's rise, let's rise, let's rise. This is the second half. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give Jesus a great big shout of praise. Thank him, thank him for the wonderful testimonies that we just heard. He is a good God. He's a faithful God. Come on, lift your voices, O Zion, and give God praise in this place, for he alone is worthy. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. There's absolutely none like you. None compares to you. We extol you. We exalt you. We lift you up. We magnify you. Hallelujah. So let's praise the Lord. Praise. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Come and praise ye.
your hands in the glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, ah, hallelujah. 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 going to try to disrupt this climate just speak in tongues or pray in the spirit if you can the mighty warrior is here he's settling cases already pray in the spirit as I receive the ministry of my brother can you hear the voices rising from Africa This is the hope of Africa. And Ethiopia shall lift our hands. We may lose everything else, but we will never lose our praise, our worship. Oh, what glory. Don't stop. Don't stop. Things are happening right now. You did not come for a concert, so pray in the spirit. Cobra seke menea Atai teke peladoa Eraka benina seke aya Shabagala baratia While they get ready, just pray in the spirit Breath something tonight Breath something tonight Enter into the new Go beyond your request realm. Experience his glory. Come on, don't stop. Bless his name tonight.
Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord mighty in battle. Bless him in this place tonight. Bless him in this place tonight. Oh, Barusha, Nabahu, Kande, Barusha. We give a glory. You are worthy of the glory. Allah, the Bakola, let's get up. sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb we bow down and worship say we and worship Yahweh oh we love you tonight somebody bow and worship him one more time say we in this place tonight to Yahweh 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 nobody like you nobody like you to Yahweh oh Yahweh Yahweh Said again, Yahweh. We give a glory tonight, Yahweh, Yahweh. Oh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Rapanola Masena Nadaba. Said again, Yahweh, Yahweh, oh, oh yeah. Yahweh, we have come to worship you tonight, oh.
your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You're the miracle working God. Ah, ah, ah. Hey, your name. In Christ alone, 
my hope is found he is my life my strength my soul and this cornerstone <laughs> this solid ground Rabatoli Basha firm to the fiercest round and storm and what heights of love what depths of peace uh, when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all No guilt in life and no fear in death. <laughs> this is the power of Christ in me. From life is cry till final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. Hey! And no power of hell. No scheme of man. He don't Never to launch you from his hands till he returns or calls he in the no power of hell, no scheme of man can never plot me from his hand till he returns he with the power kados 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 can we raise it up kados 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 is the land
tonight. Oh, I don't know whose victory is here, but if you believe victory is yours, you want to lift your voice and shout to the glory of the Lord. Hey! Can I, can I tell you something tonight? For most of you, you know already that it did not take prayer to break down the walls of Jericho. Prayer is great. Prayer is very important. But you see, once in a while, you need to shout out of your belly based on the revelation you've received that every wall of Jericho, every wall that is limiting the children of God from advancing to the place that God has destined for us, as we shout, as we shout, as we shout, all those walls are coming down. It's coming down, 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 coming down. Somebody just broke down the wall of poverty. Somebody just broke down the wall of sickness. Somebody just broke down the wall of shame. Oh, oh I had in my spirit. Somebody just broke down the wall of cycles. It may have never happened in your family, but you will be the first. Oh, I hear somebody that your new name is a pace setter. Things that has never been done before are the things God is about to use you to do. If you believe God is able, at the count of three, one, two, three, you want to give the Lord a shout. Hey! Hey! Listen, before I sit down, there's a word God put in my spirit I want to share with you tonight before I sit the Bible says in Matthew 25 that the kingdom of God is likened to ten virgins that when waiting for the bridegroom the Bible says they waited and at midnight when the bridegroom came five of them did not have, have enough oil in their lamps they had to ask the other five to, and said can you give us a little bit of your oil? He said, sorry, we can't do that. But the town is not far from here. Maybe if you go there, you may be able to get oil. And as we know already about the story, the story was meant to liken us to the kingdom. We've been ready. That may we have enough lamps, enough oil in our lamps. Or may we never lack oil in our lamps. That when the king comes, we will be ready. There's a song God gave me, says, Give me oil in my lamp. May my light never be dim. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of the King. Give me oil in my lamp. May my light never be dim. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of the king, give me oil in my say, give me. May my light never be dim. Keep me burning, keep me burning, say, keep me burning. Till the coming of the king. Say it again. Give me oil in my lap, Lord. say something Burn, keep me burning, keep me burning, keep me burning, keep me burning, till the coming of 
God will never cease burning inside of you. a powerful prayer give me fire in my bones let my passion never end keep me burning keep me burning oh
Coming back to me, Yahweh Sabao. Let me just tell you what we're going to do in a moment. I hope you have your journals here. Sennacherib threatened the children of Israel with destruction and vowed to annihilate them. He wrote a letter to Ezekiah and in verse 14, Ezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And the Bible says, And Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. A time will come in this service and I hope you don't rush to go. 
God's glory is in this house. The Lord of hosts is here. So a time will come when you would literally, prophetically, just open that journal, spread it before God. You may want to kneel, you may want to pray. And we'll give you about five minutes to just report certain issues to God. God's presence is, is mighty in our midst. And I just want to celebrate God's grace. I mean, can you just bless God for the ministry of Tokozo and Jometo? What a joy. What, what jewels we have in Africa. In a moment, I'll be bringing up someone who has blessed me in no small measure. I remember years ago at the city of David through my pastor, my late pastor, Pastor Esco, I was introduced to the ministry of, of this man through the CDs. I mean, every time Pastor Esco would travel, he would look out for new worship songs, new worship projects, just... And city of David was like a hub of worship. And people will come from afar and just sometimes they'll literally come for a praise worship before they go to their churches. And I was introduced to this ministry, and for years I just kept drinking. I was so blessed. There was a time I went to central London, I went for a music course at the University of Middlesex, and a friend of mine left the apartment for me, and all I was doing. I'll come back from lectures, shut the door, get on YouTube, and just weep and join the ministry of this, this dear man of God. He's here with us tonight. He's going to take us deeper. Deeper. You know, there is a place in God where you don't even need to ask for a thing. You don't even need to. In fact, you are so overwhelmed by his glory. You forget your needs. We are there. We are there. A couple of you are here already. You are there already. I can see his glory on you. There's, so much, there's someone on my left hand side. God's glory is heavy on you. No, no, no. It's not a prayer. It's not a prayer. When I came here singing it by, I just felt that weight, that kabod. That, that weight of God. No, you are going to get more than a request tonight. You are going to get God himself. My friend always says that the reward of worship is God himself. It's not things. No, not things. We don't seek God for things. But before I bring him up, I promised you that that prophetic song that came to us, and by the way, the night I got that song, another prophet in Nigeria... A woman, I think, a reputable apostle of God, had shared this exact same word, finally, finally. And she reached out to one of my pastor's wives and insisted she wanted to share that word with me. So I believe that word, finally, finally, is your word in season. Because the Lord has given me the tongue of the land to know how to speak his word in season to him that is weary and needy. He wakens me morning by morning. He wakens me to learn as the land. So tonight, all the way from the UK, I'm going to just get this brother to prophesy that song over us. His name is Testimony Joe. Not stage name, oh, that's his name. Welcome this brother, Testimony Joe. He will sing that song over us. You are still sitting down. Thank you for blessing us with this song. Please say hi to the people. Say hi to the Hallelujah. Our God is a great God. I am here to say congratulations to every one of you. And I am here to announce to as many that have been waiting for the Lord to do it finally. The wait is over. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Pastor Nat, for this great opportunity. Um, last year, in the place of prayer, the Lord spoke to me and said I should close my account, my Nigerian account. I've, I live in the UK, and I've lived there almost 20 years. He said I should close my Nigerian account and transfer the, all the money, all the funds there to Hallelujah Challenge. And I don't know how to go about it. And if you have been following Pastor Nat, you know the account details is not common online. I called um, one Pastor Mario. Sorry, Pastor Aaron. If he can help me get me Pastor Nat's account details. But he didn't pick up the phone. My wife went online and was, you know, fast forwarding video to see where <laughs> she can capture the account number. Finally, she got the account <laughs> details. <laughs> now, this is the first time I'm meeting this man ever. First time. I met him about two or three hours ago. Yes, sir. First time. I've never spoken to him. I've never heard him. God is, God is a dangerous God. Hallelujah. So, in obedience to the voice of the Lord... I transferred all the fund as the Lord asked me to. <laughs> so recently, just a few days ago, I was at work and I, I pray with my wife every midnight. So we were just praying on the phone and she was on Hallelujah Challenge. She said to me, babe, Pastor Nat is singing, the Lord has done it finally. I'm like, How? I say, finally, it's now a testimony. Finally, it's now a history. I say, finally, he has done it. What your mama cannot do, the Lord has done it. What your papa cannot do, the Lord has done it. What the doctor said is impossible. What your lawyer cannot do. The Lord has done it. Finally. Finally. Sir. Just about five years ago, I've organized for marriage. For my wedding, everything was set. Everything was set. Everything was set. Just two weeks before the wedding, though I've had a small wedding with my wife, I was arrested in the UK. Very close to the potential center. I stayed there for one month. I cried. I said, Lord, and I've released. Oh, the devil. The worst mistake that the devil has done in his life is that this song has been released already. That the Lord has done it finally. I was told that my deportation was imminent. That nothing can stop it. But a song has been released in the atmosphere. The Lord has done it finally. Finally. The Lord has done it all.
anybody. Wait. Wait, let me tell you. You may not understand why I'm weeping. Why I'm weeping. I told you that in Canada, I just broke down before the Lord. I said, why do you use me the way that you do? I'm, I'm not sure there's anything special about me. Now, I don't, I'm not sure you, you heard what he said. He'd been trying to reach me. That's why I beg music ministers, don't, don't push. Stop loving, stop playing games and being crafty, promoting yourself. He'd been trying to reach me. Had he reached me, he probably would have told me, oh, I have this song, I'm emptying my account, and maybe emotionally I'll just say, okay, send me the song, and then I'll now start singing it in the flesh. But when God wants to introduce you, people, people are crafty because they don't know God. People lobby because they don't know this God. If you know this God, he can raise a beggar from the dog here. He can deny somebody's sleep because of you. I know him small. I brought up Sister Lillian. Where is she? Lillian was here. Pastor Tokwe, please come. You know why I know that this is the Kairos moment? I, I know when we enter the Kairos. When we started worshipping, we just inched there. In this place right now. In this place right now, the consuming fire is consuming those requests. Because the word of the Lord has come to us. Finally, finally. So, Aaron T. Aaron is my, is like my inner circle friend. But he couldn't reach me. Because God did not want it to be, you know, that man did it. I'm sure he had this song. How can I get it out? You know, but thank God that he didn't go in the flesh. And then one of those days I was praying and the word of God came to me. Finally, finally, last, last. And then I heard a song online. I said, this is the song. I said, this is the song. Little did I know that the person who had the song had sown a sacrifice into the same platform that we have now seen. Pastor Tokbe had called me and said, there's a lady of ours that you have to meet. Oh, she's very powerful. Okay, organize a phone call. And we didn't even really, I didn't even pay attention. I didn't pay attention. You know, he said, oh, she's anointed. I, I didn't remember. Then I was flying to Atlanta. 30, over 30,000 beyond sea level. I connected to the Wi-Fi and then I got on Instagram and I heard somebody praising God. I didn't know who the person was. From somebody's reel and I began to cry in the sky, weeping. Right there and then I tweeted on Instagram. Whoever knows this woman should please reach her for me. Little did I know that it was the same woman he was trying to introduce to me. And he came on a Helia challenge and years of laboring. A month to that time, what did somebody write to you, a stinker? He said, stop this dancing you do. Please tell them. He said, I'm dancing like a mad woman. A, a, a highly placed person. That, I'm, that I'm shameless that I'm too packaged to be dancing the way I danced and that was the season God gave us the word about dancing undignified may the mysterious God this one that walks in ways that we can't explain my God my God May he visit you tonight. Do you know how I was introduced to Ntokozo? June Hallelujah Challenge. I began to weep. When I weep, somebody's destiny open, opens up. I found it. 
we're singing Jehovah is your name I know the song but the oil was strong I got a, a number just shared you know connected with the heart and look at what we are doing today may the Lord announce someone tonight I said that to let you know that this is your prophetic song for 2024 they are forecasting that this is going to be a hard year. This is your easiest year ever. Because the Lord has done it finally, finally, finally. The Lord has done it all. Put his name on the screen. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Put his name on the screen. Let him trend. Retweet him. That there is a new star in town. That there is a new voice in town. Hey! Two minutes. I think hey, they find the Lord has done it finally. Finally. She naked me like I said, the Lord has done it all. The Lord has done it all. The things that seem impossible. Say finally, it's now where testimony. Finally, it's now where history. Hey! Finally, he has done it. What my mama cannot do, the Lord has done it. What my papa cannot do, the Lord has done it. What my parents cannot do, the Lord has done it. What my lawyer cannot do. The Lord has done it. What my doctor cannot do. The Lord has done it. Hey, the Lord has done it. Finally, finally, finally. The Lord has done it all. Finally, finally, finally. I testify the Lord has done it. Finally, finally, finally. She's like a Father, in the name of Jesus, as you open the nations for me, open the nations for him. I don't know why you brought him here, but I speak over you out of your belly. Finally, that which you were carrying for years, the songs you recorded for years that the world could not hear. Finally, the world will hear you. Finally, the church will hear you. Finally, I use him as a point of contact to your destiny. The Bible says, When the angels blew the trumpet, the seals were open. As I blow my trumpet, the seals of destiny be open. Celebrate them as they go. I am blessed to be a blessing. 
Somebody say, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Oh, I'm so glad that God uses me as a channel for people. Please be seated because we're going to enter into the throne room. We're there already, but we want to enter in deeper. As the technical team sets up for this man who's, who's touched my life so deeply. And let me tell you a testimony as well. Years ago, I felt led to pray. Pray for him and pray for America. There was a time America was going through a season and I just, I had, I have a, a circle of friends from time to time. We pray about things beyond ourselves. We get a revelation and we just get on the Zoom. So we're led to pray for America. And I remember in Birmingham, about 2007 or so, I went for a retreat in Birmingham. And then I was praying at night and I was weeping and I felt led to pray. I've never told Brother Terry this. I felt led to pray for him and just intercede for his ministry. And then years later, I was praying and interceding for America. And then I got a call from a man, Terry McCalmon. And he says, Nathaniel. The Lord has put you in my heart to join me to sing over America. Can you come to please join me in the worship meeting to sing over America? And he didn't even know I was praying for America in that season. God does strange things. And there have been a part of that, I think last year or last two years. And this year I'll be with him in October. So if you're around Dallas, Dallas, Texas... And he's here with his lovely wife. Bless you then. So please join us for Sing Over America. He and I are mutual friends of a dear woman of God, Pastor Elsie. And we travel the world just raising worship on the platform of Worship His Majesty. And he's such an incredible worshiper. Is here with CDs, hard copy CDs. Put your hands together. I'm sure we've not seen that in a while. So, I want all those CDs to go tonight. We are Nigerian. I'll say we're Nigerian. We know they carry last. And I want to, there are kingdom, you know, billionaires here, I believe. I said before, that this place is too small for us. It's even becoming too hot. May God put it in the heart of one of our people to build one for God. Where we sit 20,000 people just worshipping God. And the funds will come. So please, the CDs are available. Understand. Hallelujah Challenge is going to get a hundred of those CDs. They cost... It's not expensive. It's because the Naira is just misbehaving. Ten dollar is nothing. It's nothing. So don't start calculating in your head. It's, it's, say ten dollars is nothing to me. Ah. You are in a prophetic atmosphere. You are, you are cringing under ten dollars. I have people in this VIP session that will tell me, Persona, stop disgracing me. They'll write the check. Amen. So please, let's get the CDs. I'm trusting that there are people who will say to me, I'm getting 10, I'm getting 50, personal take and share to whoever you want. We want him to live here blessed. Amen. He's not, he's not living on the CDs. I mean, these are people, he's traveled the world with Pastor Benny Hinn and, you know, all of these great people leading worship. So he, he's blessed. But I believe in sowing into good grounds. Amen. And while we're talking about that, my pastor and my father, my mentor, walked into the house. Honor my pastor, Pastor Ben Akabweze. You better stand and honor my father. He's going to come and give us the father's blessing. You know, 
I, I honor my pastor deeply. I don't, it's not, I'm not apologetic about it. I'm a man of honor. And I have grown under his leadership. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Are we ready, sound? Are we ready? You said I should talk till you are ready. I'm out of what to say. I don't want to talk in the flesh now. We're ready. With a good God bless you. All the way from Dallas, Texas. His first time on Hallelujah Challenge. Leading us to the very throne room of grace. Welcome with me, Minister Terry McCalmon.
do miracles tonight. Right now, release your miracle power in this house. Miracles of healing. Miracles of forgiveness. Miracles of restoration. Come, Holy Spirit, fresh and anew. soul. Thank you, those of you who have ministered. Nathaniel is, actually I have a son who's the same age as Nathaniel. So now I have another son. He just has much more of a suntan than I do. I am honored to be a part of this tonight. Thank you so much. Serve you. I want to 
resurrection in the fellowship of your sufferings oh how we need a revival on this planet Lord This is the time when true worshipers will worship Him. And these are the days when my Father's ways will be known to me. This is the hour when the Spirit's power will move again. But it's only as we worship Him in spirit. In spirit and in truth, sing with me. Proclaim. 
worship Him. You are. First time, well, I ministered several years ago for uh, Andre Crouch in his church, and there was such a connection there spiritually, and his sister who co-pastored with him got up afterwards and said, it's, it's the same spirit. It's the kindred spirit. And that's why we connected so much, because I had gleaned so much from Andre Crouch when I was a young man. Some of the styles that I did on the piano were because I was listening to his albums. And then when I met Nathaniel, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how many years ago now with, with Sister Elsie, but many years ago now, there was 
the kindredness. And he had listened to a lot of my CDs. You see how the father works? How he goes from generation to generation and he puts people together with kindred spirits. God can do anything. Anytime, any way he wants to do it. I have no idea what the rest of this year will bring. With, with Nathaniel coming over and helping us sing over America, we are a desperate nation for the presence of God right now. We are in deep trouble as a country. Our moral fiber is disintegrating. And so I'm calling worshipers across our land to just come and sing over the land. Not look at the problem, sing over the problem. You have mountains in your life. Don't look at the mountain. Look at the one who conquers the mountain. Look at the answer and focus on him. The Lion of Judah is right there with you. Praise God. this song maybe 25 years ago. Can you hear the sound of heaven like the sound of many waters? Is the sound of worship coming from His throne? There are cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known. See.
singing in heaven right now. They're worshiping around the throne. We honor. 
honor you, Lord. This gathering is for your pleasure. It's for your honor. I just want Jesus. I just want Jesus. He's the only one who satisfies my soul. I just want Jesus. Oh. If I just have him, he will make me fully whole. You see, my friends, I just want Jesus. I just want Jesus. He's the only one who satisfies my soul. He's the only one who satisfies my soul. If I just have him, he will make me fully whole. Yes, if we just have him, he will make us full. music plays let the Holy Spirit reach down and do a work in your heart
If you know it, sing it in the presence of Jehovah. devotional chorus that the Lord gave me several years ago. just want to teach it to you. It's very easy. It goes like this. Make me a sweet sound A humble heart found Make
just hum it now. Everybody hum. for all of those who are active in worship leading in this meeting tonight and looking on by the internet we need that new sound for 2024 to be birthed across this land the same sound that is being heard around your throne not the same sound from 10 years ago a new sound the sound of the redeemed that sets captives free. I pray for my brothers and my sisters that a fresh anointing will be released from the courts of heaven. And the music will have such power that sinners will drop to their knees with conviction from your Holy Spirit. Make us a sweet, sweet sound. Ooh, 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 ooh. going to share one more song with you and turn it back over to my friend. The Lord comes upon you sometimes when you least expect I was in a prayer room seeking God for the evening service, minding my own business while the other people were just milling around and praying, just sitting back in the corner by myself. And he chose that moment to drop a little melody in my heart. I really didn't write the song, I just received it from him. You know what I mean? He took that little chorus and began to bless nations. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to your name.
give him glory, saints. Oh, we give glory to your name. Oh, Lord, to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be. Everybody, can you stand now? Hallelujah. Can you thank the Lord for this gift to the body of Christ? Let me explain something to you, and let me encourage you that we have gone ahead to make available free buses to about 13 locations. So, please, because you are soaking in the presence of God now. Because we are Africans and especially Nigerians, I mean, we love the Lord. We praise, we dance. But let me tell you the dimensions in God. In praise, we, we experience his power, all the anointing. However, in worship, we experience his glory. What did I say? In praise, we experience his power, all the anointing, but in worship, we experience what? His glory. And what would take hours to be sorted by the anointing? In the glory, it takes a split of a second. And it's in the glory that we are transformed. You may not see it now, but something is happening to your spirit man while you are here. I learned to hear the voice of God while I soaked on the music of this man. I knew who my wife was by spending time worshipping to... Even now, you ask my wife, I would sleep and worship with the songs for hours soaking. Praise is powerful. And we will praise. We've heard testimonies. But in the glory, we become more like Jesus. Jesus. May I encourage you that as you leave this hallelujah, 
challenge. Go deeper. Say go deeper. deeper. Yes, we like to dance and we are going to dance and release the power of God. But you see, something happens in the glory. We experience him and we are transformed to the same image. I can tell you for free. Soak in this kind of sounds. One hour, two hours alone, the voice of God becomes clearer to you. Hallelujah Challenge was born in this place. The things that have blessed you, the songs that have blessed you, were because I will just stay here for hours and weep. Lift your hands and say, Lord, clothe me with the anointing of worship, with the spirit of worship. Draw me deeper. So, I just thought to share that. We are rounding off shortly by God's grace. But I don't want you to miss out on the, on the bottom part. You're going to lay your journals on the ground. God confirmed to us right here by the testimony of our brother. I mean, who could have walked that out? And we're closing out with that. While we receive the ministry of our sister and rejoice, we're going to take an offering. For the first time, not for the first time in this, in this challenge, we normally give people the opportunity to, you know, to, to give publicly and we'll have our account details here, I mean, just on the festival night. You heard the testimony of that brother. You don't have to close your account, except the Lord tells you to do that. But I tell you, the glory of God is here. And we have purpose in our heart to bless the people God has used to release that glory in this place. So I'm going to ask the team to put up the account details. We're going to celebrate, rejoice, and then my pastor will come and bring the Father's blessing. And I will come and blow the final trumpet. You will place your journals on the floor like I had it, like Hezekiah. You may lie down on it, but I'll give you five to seven minutes to report those issues to God. Everyone watching online, please get out your journals. That's what I saw, the picture in the spirit. I saw Sennacherib and Hezekiah. You're going to place those requests before God and just report them to God. Amen. With a good God bless you. Can you welcome the one and only mercy who is blessed. The last time she came here, she came here as just a married woman. But today she's here as a mommy. And she's going to release that mommy anointing. The one who do this one. Oh. Welcome, Mercy Chiwo Bless. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg bread. He's a God who never forgets his own. No, I'm a Ramonye. Has he felt you before? I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No.
I'm at rest because I have you. I'm at rest because I have you. And I have you. I have everything. I... For the last time, let us sing it out loud to our God and King. Oh, my confidence. Yes, is in you. And I put my trust. Trust in you, nobody else but you. Jesus, I'm not alone. You're with me. Say, one with you. One with you. He's the Lord of Shadow. Can you walk up to three people and congratulate them? Say, congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, cause your song tonight will be Jesus, you do this one, oh, oh. Hey, all the glory is yours, you do this one, oh, oh. This is what you will sing, oh. When I think about the things that you've done, my imagination has turned to reality. When he have you go shout, oh my God, oh God. Hey, you do this one, oh. You how far you tell them again when I think about the love that you've shown me, hey, hey, hey. my imagination has come to reality. Oh my god, oh, oh my god, oh, oh yes, you do this one. Testimonies overflowing, overflow celebration. celebration. It is happening already. Oh, what do you see?
Hallelujah. What a festival of his glory. What a festival. Wait, 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 wait. This is the greatest night of your life. Can you give me two minutes? Do you know that as glorious as this is, this is a foretaste of heaven. Can you imagine what millions and billions of people will miss if they don't accept Jesus? Very quickly, please, very quickly, before we get the Father's blessings. Now, let me tell you what we will do. My pastor will come, declare over our nation and the, the other countries, and then I will urge my fellow ministers to come. We will sing, you have your journals down before God, and then we will sing, see what the Lord has done over them. And finally, finally, and we are closed. But before we get there, if you are here tonight and you feel so happy, however, you are not born again, this is a foretaste of what you'll be missing out on. Please, every eye closed, head bowed. Heads bowed, please. If you are here, and you are not born again. You know Jesus is not the Lord of your life. All you would have done throughout today would have been to sweat and lose some calories. But if you want to add some substance and value to what you've done tonight, you need to accept this Jesus that has changed my life. That has changed the minister's life. Wherever you are, ushers, please look around. I'm not going to ask them to come. Put up the barcode. We have over 80,000 people on YouTube watching and there are thousands of people perhaps there who are not born again. Without fear, shame, I need you to just slip your hands above your head. You want to take it a step further. You want to know Jesus all over this place. Yes, that's it. God bless you. He sees those hands. Can you close your eyes and say this prayer after me? Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for your eternal sacrifice on the cross. I acknowledge I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Wash me in your blood. Break the power of sin over my life. Come into my heart and write my name in the book of life. I confess you, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, as my savior and my lord and i declare my sins are forgiven i am born again in jesus name father i declare everyone who has said that prayer by faith saved to the uttermost your sins are forgiven and you are brand new in jesus name please could you help me look at that link hallelujahchallengelive.com or the barcode scan it feel it after this festival we have a team dedicated to just reaching out to you praying with you and telling you a, a few things about your newfound faith okay please endeavor to fill that form and you will be blessed amen with a good god bless you welcome my fast my pastor father in the lord he will come and speak the father's blessing over us i do not close the festival without this in my opinion this is the highest this is one of the highest points of the festival could you stand to honor my pastor if you like what you see that's the man who's in charge of my life as a pastor celebrate him tonight for a moment. I, I don't have much time, so I won't do any protocols. Amen. I've been asked by Pastor Nath to do two things. First, you know, to speak some blessings over our nation, Nigeria, and then pronounce the Father's uh, blessing for, you know, the team and everyone else who uh, wants to be associated with those blessings. Amen. But what I've, I feel led 
to do tonight is to charge us to say, come, let us rebuild Nigeria. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. If you read the book of Nehemiah, beginning from, you know, chapter 2, you know, it speaks about how Nehemiah picked up a burden to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. He said, you know, that we may no longer be a reproach. Truth be told, in many senses, Nigeria has become a reproach. But, you know, that's not what we want to dwell with, dwell on tonight. You know, Nehemiah was concerned about Jerusalem because it was the Jews' holy city. It was Judah's capital city and represented Jewish national identity just like Nigeria represents to us and I know the South Africans and other nationals, whatever your nation is, you can put it in place of Nigeria. Nehemiah loved his homeland. Guess what? Even though he had lived his whole life in Babylon. So Nehemiah was not part of the problem. He didn't contribute to the problem <laughs> that led to the destruction of Jerusalem's walls. And yet, he picked up such a heavy burden. He wanted to return to Jerusalem to reunite the Jews and remove the shame of Jerusalem's broken walls and thereby bring glory to God and restore the power of God's presence among his people. What am I saying? Many of us, you know, don't feel a burden, don't feel a responsibility to pay for Nigeria. We think those people who damage Nigeria should do it. But we all have a stake in this nation. The Bible says we'll eat the good of this land. If there's no, no goodness in the land, what are we going to eat? Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So do it for yourself. And, you know, your generations. What, are the symbol, what is the symbolism of broken walls? He talks about Jerusalem's broken walls. Broken walls are symptomatic of God's displeasure. They create easy access to the enemy. So they speak about vulnerability, a feeling of insecurity. They speak about disorderliness and invariably high crime rate when the, the walls are broken down. They speak about disruption in constituted authority because the back in those days, authority will normally meet at the city gate. And like the walls of Jerusalem, the walls of Nigeria are broken. Nigeria does not have physical walls like the city of Jerusalem, but it has spiritual walls around its borders. And today, one evidence that the walls are broken is found in Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Does this sound like Nigeria we're talking about? But so what did Nehemiah do? Nehemiah didn't dwell on the problem of broken walls. He fasted and prayed for several days. And there is a pattern in what Nehemiah did that I want to commend to us today. First, Nehemiah began after he had fasted and was in prayer. Five things he did. Number one, he praised God. We've done a lot of praise tonight and in the past, the previous 19 days. The second thing he did was give thanks. We're going to take a moment, even if it's 30 seconds, each of us. We may now rise and just begin to give thanks, begin to thank God for Nigeria. You must be something you can find to thank God for Nigeria about, or for your own nation about. I give thanks. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this nation that you have blessed exceedingly. Ah, thank you for our rich arable lands. Thank you, Lord, O oh God, 
for the amazing abundance of natural resources. You know. Thank you for a vibrant, energetic, entrepreneurial, hardworking people. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Ah, thank you for excellent topography. Thank you for fantastic geography. Ah, thank you, Lord, oh God. Oh, for blessings that are the envy of many nations. We thank you, Lord, oh God, even for the vibrancy of the church in this nation, oh God, for the spiritual role, Lord, that you are given this nation even in these end times. Receive our thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. The next thing Nehemiah did was repentance. Remember, Nehemiah was not part of the problem. He didn't even live in Jerusalem. And yet, hear what he says in Nehemiah 1, from the latter part of verse, you know, uh, you know from, from verse 6. He says, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you, included himself. He said, both my father's house and I have sinned. He said, we have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Next thing we're going to do, therefore, is stand up and repent. Let's take personal responsibility. Daniel did the same thing. Let's take personal responsibility for the sins of this land. We talked about the seven abominations, the abominable things, God, that are bound in this land. Let's go ahead and just say, Father, we're sorry. Lord God, have mercy. Have mercy. In your mercy, we hold judgment from this nation in the name of Jesus. Have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, your word says that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Father, do so for us. Do so for our nation, Nigeria, in Jesus' name. The fourth thing he did was make specific requests concerning Jerusalem before God. We're going to take the next 30 seconds. Each one, make some specific requests concerning this nation. Bring some specific requests. And let's all in one accord speak to him. Every Nigerian here, you know, and, and, and every other nation represented, including those online, speak to God. Place a request before God. You know, you had, you know, uh, Brother uh, McCalmon talk about, you know, how terrible things are in this country. Truth is, every country has some requests they can place before God. Father, Lord God, oh Lord, ah Lord, as we have praised you this past 20 days now. Father, Lord Almighty, cause the land of this nation to yield her increase in the name of Jesus. Let hunger cease in this land. Let abundance, oh God, oh Lord, be our Lord in this land. In Jesus' name. The final thing that Nehemiah did was make a commitment. He made a personal commitment. Amen. He didn't just arrange to raise money and send. He left his privileged position as the king's cup bearer and took a trip to go and join in the rebuilding, to join hands with others to rebuild his nation. Make a commitment, a personal commitment tonight about something you will do. If nothing else that you will do, just make a commitment that every day I will lift up a word of prayer for this nation. Go ahead and just make some commitment about what you as a person will do. And as you do so, remember that rebuilding Nigeria will require endurance as it was the case with Jerusalem. And there will be opposition. And one thing you can be sure about the enemy is that the enemy is very persistent. And so the task is not, it's not, it's not something we do tonight. It's not a flick of a switch. It's something we must persist in. Make that commitment. And Father Lord Almighty, you have heard, oh God, the commitments of your people towards the rebuilding of our nation. Oh Lord, our God, help us, oh Lord. Help us, oh Lord. Let every prophecy 
from you, Lord, has been spoken over this nation, be manifested in due season. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people say, hey, louder. Amen. Amen. The second thing it has to do is bring us the Father's blessings. And I thought, how, which better way to do so than to speak blessings directly from the Word of God. And so I'm going to be speaking blessings over you straight from the book of Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 16 to chapter 4 verse 3 in the NLT. You know, so I'm going to be paraphrasing, but this is Based the, the, the foundation for these blessings. And so I pray for you that from God's glorious unlimited resources he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Amen. That Christ will make his home in your hearts Amen. as you trust in him. Amen. That your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. That you may have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. That you may experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. That you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. That God, through his mighty power, will walk within you to accomplish infinitely more than you might ask or think. That you will lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. That you will always be humble and gentle. That you will be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other's faults. Because of your love. That you will make every effort. To keep yourselves united in the spirit. Binding yourselves together with peace. And the goodness of the almighty God and his mercies will never cease in your life. All your days. And whatever glory you have seen now is only but the beginning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, okay, I've finished what has not said I should do. Thankfully, I have some about two minutes left. Uh, now I want to do what he didn't ask me to do. Amen? You know, normally when coups involve senior officers working with junior officers, the coup has a way of succeeding. Uh, so a coup has just happened. And I want to lay the foundation for this coup. The foundation is not, well, it's our own constitution. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 11, and 12 from the Amplified Bible. 1 Corinthians 9, 11, and 12. If we have sown the good seed of spiritual things in you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share in this rightful claim over you, do, we not, do not we even more? However, we did not exercise this right, but we put up with everything so that we will not hinder the spread of the good news of Christ. This was Paul's consecration, very similar to Apostle to, to, to Pastor Matt's own consecration. But despite Paul's reservations, he receives gifts on at least four recorded occasions from the Philippian church. Just so you don't think I'm the one making that up. Philippians 4, 15 to 19. Philippians 4, 15 to 19. And you Philippians, this was Paul, right? Know that in the early days of preaching the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more than once for my needs. As I said, four recorded account. Not that I seek the gift itself, but I do seek the profit which increases to your heavenly account, the blessing which is accumulating for you. But I have received everything in full and more. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent me, 
They are the fragrant aroma of an offering, an acceptable sacrifice which God welcomes and in which he delights. And it was then that he prayed for them this prayer that we all love and we all appropriate. And my God will liberally supply, fill until full your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So, just like the apostle says here, not that I seek the gift itself, but I do seek the profit which increases to your heavenly account, the blessing which is accumulating for you. And so some people have said to me that they've been mightily blessed and they think that as an earth, by refusing to give them the chance to bless him is blocking their increase to their heavenly account. And I agree with them. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, you know, we're going to respect as now covenant, his consecration, uh, work with the, with the team, and we'll agree a completely distinct account which they will create and put up for anyone who feels led. All of those who have been burdened to say, we, we need, this man has blessed us spiritually, mightily. We want to be able to bless him so that it will account as increase to our own heavenly accounts. Amen. If you agree with me, let me hear hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My job is done. Amen. It's okay. There is a testimony we just heard that happened here. It sounds like a lie. I told you that the glory was here. But thank God I had to say find the lady so they don't think we made it up. Please can the lady come? I mean, this is strange. You know, the Holy Spirit had witnessed that, that coup my pastor did to me before I came. But it's okay. Please come. Please. Please share this testimony. Hallelujah. It's not my testimony directly, but I was a part of it. We were sitting at the back. I met a young lady here. She's shy to come up. And she says she hasn't told her dad yet. And according to Yoruba tradition, you have to inform your parents. We were sitting down together. I needed to get water, so I went out. And then I saw the CDs that... Terry McCalmon? Yes, that you said we should buy. So when I went and I asked, how much are these CDs? They said, $10. I said, eh, how much in Naira? <laughs> they said, 15 thereabouts. <sighs> so I took a deep breath and I told them, ah, okay, I will consider. So I came into the church and I shared with her. I said, ah, I saw the CD. It would be nice to get it, but, you know, as Naira did. So she said, where do they listen to these types of CDs? I said, well, maybe some computers or your car. She said, ah, I don't have a car. I said, there's nothing God cannot do. <laughs> so she said, auntie, take. I looked at it. She gave me $5 to make for the 10. So in my mind, I'm like, you think five dollars but she now said to me god said i should sow it thank you very much and i prayed and i shared a testimony with her that how i got my first car by obeying god i bought license plates and kept and prayed over it that was how i got my car so not quite 10 15 minutes later after he had finished the praise that we did the worship she came back inside and she was shouting. What happened? I just got a car. She got a text. Come and pick up your car tomorrow. Come and pick up your car tomorrow. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> so we had to share because it happened here. I've not seen a miracle like that before in my life. Hallelujah. Stand up, please. I got a word and I'll be struggling to share it. There's somebody whose spouse is here. I've been struggling and holding it. But when I heard this, I said, release that word. You are single, but your spouse is in this place. By the next hallelujah challenge, you will hear that testimony. The God who did this one in the glory. Remember what I told you about the glory. That when the glory comes, when what you can get in the anointing in, in, in days or hours, you get in a moment. Remember I said that. Lift your hands and receive that which you came for. Put your journals down. Put them. Put your journals down. Let's do that. Come and play this song. See what the Lord has done. Can all the ministers come? All my singer friends, can you please come? Can the... I'll crave the indulgence of everyone who ministered in the challenge. Pastor Ben, Pastor Bemigo. Pastor Tokwe, Pastor Toby, and Pastor Emmanuel, please come. I want us to release things in this glory. There are things hanging here. You've heard this testimony. So you take five minutes and call out those things you've written to heaven. Report them to God. Background. So I'm going to give you five minutes. Like Hezekiah, place that request on the ground. Spread it before the Lord. The glory of God is here. That testimony is a testament of his glory. Linked to the city of the one who released that glory. Open your mouth and begin to release those requests. Your five minutes starts from now. Anything can happen here. Spread it before the Lord. Oh, God is here. Please, where's my channel? Where's my channel? Father, we stand together tonight in the presence of your glory. Spread it before the Lord. That's the instruction. S -s Spread it before the Lord. I beg you, don't ask for small things tonight. Big things. minutes I'm just going to ask the ministers who are ministered here to lift their hands as a point of contact to heaven and receiving on our behalf we have never seen the kind of things that God is about to do we have never seen it he's giving us a sign
as we approach the final minute i want you to raise your volume and begin to give thanks i'm going to just ask the ministers to stretch for their hands and begin to declare second chronicles 5 12 to 14 when the glory came the ministers were there Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your voice and just begin to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, oh God. For an amazing Lord, oh God. Experience, oh God. Under your grace, Lord, oh God. Under your anointing, Lord. Oh, Lord. An amazing time, oh God. Oh, your glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the soul saved. Thank you, Lord, oh God. Ah, for, 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 for chains broken. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for deliverances. Thank you, Lord, for open doors. Thank you for breakthroughs, oh God. Thank you, Lord, oh God. Oh, mighty signs and wonders wrought in the spirit realm, oh God, about which your people will yet testify. Oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you even for the new songs that you have released into the hearts, oh God, of your ministers, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for every word of prophecy spoken over your people, Lord, oh God. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for all our prayers. And supplications which with thanksgiving we lifted up to you. For by faith we count it all done. In the name of Jesus. And we agree that there shall be a performance. In the name of Jesus. And as we go forth from here Lord. Our testimony will be finally, finally. Finally, finally. Let's done it finally. Finally, finally. The Lord has done it. Okay, we're going to close with that. Can we stand? We're going to sing, see what the Lord has done. And then we close out with the Lord has done it. See what the Lord has done. Oh, oh, oh. What we waited for.
Hallelujah Challenge, heaven on earth. How many of you have been blessed by Hallelujah Challenge? We want to specially thank our ministers, thank Eco Hotel for giving us this place, for helping us. We want to thank Simon Cooper's partners. We want to thank what? 
show gear, our technical partners. Sorry? I fix the internet company, Flutter Wave. What? Carol Films, the cinematographers, Event Lease, Premium Trust Bank. By the way, we have Premium Trust represented in the house. Okay, it's here. Premium Trust. How many of you don't have a Premium Trust account? That's, that's the an account you should have. Then Zenith, thank you. We have representatives of Zenith, Flutterwave, Instagram, Facebook, Mixlr, YouTube. Thank you. Please celebrate them for us. The Lord has done it. Finally, finally, finally. The Lord has done it. number on the screen finally finally it is well finally for you. The team will appear in it. Something high class. Color films. You are shooting this one this week before you go back. I say Start here. Go to our website. We are putting up their details. Bless them finally, finally. Tell them, Pastor Nas said we should bless you finally, finally. Are you ready? Let's let's go to the other one and the new one. Are they your hand? Hey. Are they your hand?
Jesus, can you lift your two hands to him? Wave your hands to him and thank God for your testimony. Every wall of delay has collapsed. Just go ahead and celebrate Jesus. Every wall blocking your womb has collapsed. Just appreciate God, appreciate God, appreciate God. Give him praise. If you want to jump, you can jump, you can shout, you can shout. Celebrate your testimony. Celebrate your testimony. Celebrate your testimony. Can you lift your two hands? Father, we cannot just thank you. Your word says, surely there is an end. Thank you because an end has come to every delay in our life. Daddy, 
we cannot thank you enough because to now without any doubt within us, we know that you have put an end to every delay in our life. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, before the sun rising tomorrow morning, let everyone that can say loud amen receive their testimony. Every power, Maroma Kashandalara, assigned to raise every wall of delay. In the name of Jesus, they will pay with their life. That wall has collapsed and it is collapsed forever. The world will hear your testimony. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. As you go, God will go with you. In the name of Jesus. Go and come with us testimony in Jesus' name. Can I prophesy to you that you will not mix next hallelujah challenge? I say you will not mix next hallelujah challenge. No matter what your enemy try, they will keep failing. They will fail in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we share the grace and fellowship? One, two, go. Hallelujah. Please, can we exit the hall in an orderly fashion? Volunteers, please wait. Don't be in a hurry to go home. Um, we're having a meeting at the green room, but because the green room may not take us all, we'll use the grand ballroom opposite. So volunteers, please stay behind. Please, can we exit the hall in an orderly fashion? We want to take our guests out, so we want to clear out an exit. Please, let's exit the hall in an orderly fashion so we can clear out our all exit. Please do not call the numbers on the screens. Those are numbers for the bus drivers. They are not meant to be on the screen. Please do not call the numbers. The buses are all outside. When you get outside, someone will direct you. Please do not call the numbers on the screen. Those are the numbers of the bus drivers. It's an error. Please do not call those numbers. The drivers are coming.